Very nice, am I right? Hans has got a consultancy out here testing cars. He's a brilliant engineer, but not much of a driver. So he's looking for a business partner. Want to join the insurance business? Welcome to the insurance business, eh? You're going to love this. So you are the one Joel has sent to help me, yes? Uh, my name is Hans Liebold. For 30 years, I designed and built performance vehicles in Germany, but I have come to the festival to pursue a more exciting vocation, insurance. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm trying to put you at your ease. It seems I have failed. <laughs> no matter. <laughs> Let us begin. Now, the claimant in our first case poses an interesting question around acceleration and downforce. Now, if you would kindly take this Volkswagen Type 2 and attempt to make it take off. I assure you, this is uh, theoretically possible, given sufficient speed. I have set your navigation. I have forgotten to close the roads to traffic, but we must reproduce conditions as closely as possible, yes? And so the claim is disproved. The Volkswagen Type 2 cannot fly. But to be truthful, I'm not surprised by the results of this experiment. But you will learn I'm nothing if not thorough. Hello! I'm pleased to see you again. Not merely for professional purposes, but also because of our developing social connection. Now, this is a BMW Isetta. For its size, it is deceptively powerful and also uh, highly maneuverable, though I think perhaps not so maneuverable for the claimant who delivered theirs into the back of a furniture truck. So, if you would please test the iSetter's ability to navigate traffic whilst avoiding collisions. For the experiment and for your own safety, of course. And so the claim is disproved. With sufficient driver application, the BMW Isetta may navigate even dense traffic. I will inform the claimant that they must simply try harder.
Our next case involves an outlandish claim and a vehicle with something of a reputation here in Britain, which I believe to be undeserved. You know this, the Reliant Supervan. With some small stability enhancements, this design, in my opinion, is quite sound. You will proceed, please, to Bamborough Castle, where we will attempt a small and highly scientific jump. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Recalculating route. In 200 yards, turn right. Good, good. Now, to recreate the conditions of the accident, which resulted in a claim for damages to a church roof. You see, the fiberglass construction makes the Reliance Supervan light enough to become airborne. It lacks, I think, in aerodynamics and engine power. For this next test, I have compensated, perhaps overcompensated. <laughs> we shall see. to me that I have added no additional safety features, but at least you will be landing on sand. It worked. I mean, of course it worked. And so we see that it is entirely possible to deposit a Reliant Superfan in the belfry of a country church. I will contact the claimant and pass on the good news. Well, the results anyway. Do you know that in my spare time, I am an avid watcher of films? Oh yes, one of my favorite films sees young people having personal revelations whilst racing classic cars. See if you can tell what it is. Now, one of my claimants has apparently tried to recreate scenes of the film, which features a Morris Minor similar to this one, with limited success. They will require city conditions on uh, traffic lights. So, Edinburgh, if you please. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left. is not so much like the California of the film, but perhaps we can use our imaginations. Well done, you have achieved the optimal result for the first part of our test, which is, uh, I'm not so sure, this is a uniquely American word, but uh, cruising, I think, yes? 
Now we must test the drag race performance of the Morris Minor with a few small engine modifications of my own. This is not strictly reproducing conditions of the film, but nor is the speed trap we are borrowing from the Horizon Festival. Now, straight line speed is our object. If it helps, you may imagine you are racing against an impossibly handsome actor. Excellent. I will advise the claimants that they may be confident lining up against an Austin Healy Sprite, as in the film. Once that Morris Minor returns from the crash repairer, of course. I must confess, I was confused by our next case involving a racing truck. I was not aware of such a term. I had to consult with Horizon to find a suitable test vehicle. Though I was not disappointed with the result. Perhaps before we begin testing, you would like a chance to, how do you say, uh, get a feel for this machine? In 100 yards, turn right. yards, turn right. Turn right. In 400 yards, turn left. yards, turn right. Turn right. Very good. Unlike our claimant, you have passed the first test. The vehicle is not upside down. Our claimant insists that these so-called high-performance heavy vehicles are simply too fast to manage variable terrain. We will attempt not only to prove otherwise, but to demonstrate they are much faster than kept firmly on the road. You may feel an urge to go off-road, despite my carefully plotted route. You will please resist this urge. Much improved acceleration over flat ground.
advanced traction through tight corners, yes. Also, I must congratulate you on your restraint. Downhill roads provide increased downforce as well as speed. Interesting. You see, we may dispute the claims that the racing truck cannot be controlled. Indeed, if yours was uh, refrigerated, you could quite easily deliver milk or eggs or other perishable goods. Got an order here for one fully restored 64 GT40. Now, whose might that be? My friend, did you know that uh, video footage of our investigations is highly sought after around the festival? I was not aware so many young people were considering insurance as a career. In any case, we have a new claim and a new test vehicle, perfect for scouting our new test location. Please enjoy the scenery as well as the performance. Turn around when it is safe to do so. In 100 yards, turn sharp left. Turn right. In 200 yards, Turn sharp right. Turn sharp right. In 100 yards, turn sharp left. yards turn left turn left please notice the superior grip and downforce on tight turns also these woods are nice yards turn right notice the improved acceleration as we pass the dam a little of my handiwork the acceleration not the dam in 100 yards turn left in 400 yards turn right turn right The 
the vehicle is performing well, yes? Good. You should be approaching the quarry now. So, what do you think? A suitable location for a machine as rugged as this, yes? Now, allow me to explain. Our claimant has explored this very quarry in a Willis MB, similar to ours, though they have expressed dissatisfaction with their performance upgrades. Through a combination of my work and your skill, we will now set about, very politely, proving them wrong. May I suggest a more aggressive approach to navigation? You see the set nav? Please ignore this. yards, turn right. <clears throat> I will make it known to the client that the Willis MB is more than adequate to their purposes of vertical movement and visceral excitement. Skill, nerve, cutting edge performance vehicles. Oh, and bricks. Lots and lots and lots of Lego bricks. We've teamed up with Lego to create the biggest event Horizon has ever assembled. It's time for Lego Speed Champions. Take on hundreds of brick challenges. Build your very own Lego house and then fill your garage with scaled up racing machines to take on the competition and be crowned the ultimate Lego speed champion. Time to play with the biggest Lego toy box you've ever seen. Hello, good day, uh, how are you? Now that we have enjoyed the small talk, we may proceed to the next case, involving an acceleration test in normal traffic conditions. Now, this is a 1966 Volkswagen Beetle, into which I have placed a 2.5 liter F4 turbo engine, partly to replicate the conditions of the claim, but also because I would very much like to see what happens. Perhaps be careful with this vehicle. I may have overdone it. Actually, you know, the claim concerns a driver very much overdoing it, so by all means, uh, how is it you say, put the foot down.
So, another case closed, though I must say, I like this Clement. All those years working in Germany, never once did I think to do this to a Volkswagen. Our next claimant extensively modified a 1955 Chevy 150 utility sedan with a view to turning it into a rally car. This is not so far beyond the realms of possibility. The vehicle is heavy, yes, but with all-wheel drive and rally-tuned springs and dampers, it could be done. The claimant's attempt resulted, of course, in complete failure, but I am confident that ours will not. Turn around when it is safe to do so. In 100 yards, turn sharp left. Turn right. In 200 yards, turn sharp right. Turn sharp right. In 100 yards, turn sharp left. Calculating route. In 100 yards, turn left. yards. Turn left. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Recalculating route. yards, turn right. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. In 200 yards, turn right. Turn right. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left.
hundred yards, you will arrive at your destination. All in all, a highly adequate rally car. And we should not discount the psychological effect upon the competition of being overtaken by a collector's item. Ah, greetings once again. So, we have our modified Chevy 150. Now we must test the claim that it will make a competitive rally car. I am confident in the vehicle's performance, and I have observed enough of your experimental driving technique to be confident in you also. Ah, now, you will need a co-driver, of course. This will be me. Steady incline, four-wheel drive, hold the rear end tight. That did not sound as it should. You see how those wide tires and reduced weight handle the corners? The claimant failed to grasp this. Hard left now. Stay on the road. Now on the decline. Suspension. Braking and steady nerves. Such power in the big Chevrolet engine. This the claimant grasps a little too well, I think. Satisfactory, yourself and the car. The claimant will be pleased to know we have succeeded where they catastrophically failed. Or perhaps they will not. Have you noticed an upward trend in peculiar insurance cases since we began our work? I have noticed this. Is it possible we are, how would you say, a bad influence? And here is one such case. The claimant wishes to establish the absolute maximum capabilities and tolerances of the Myers Manx June buggy. Ah, well, if test the June buggy we must, then test the June buggy we will. will make a prime testing location. I think also away from prying eyes. I knew insurance would be difficult. I did not know it would be so popular. Now, the Manx here has been outfitted with the latest accelerometers, lateral g-force meters and impact sensors. I will be using the data to uh, build a detailed telemetric profile. All I require from you is that you drive like you have no concern for your own safety. 
Please accept as a token of my esteem that I think this will not be so difficult a task for you. So, we have successfully established the tolerances of the Maya's Manx. To what end, I'm not sure. We have received no claims of damage to June buggies, except perhaps our own. Ah, I'm afraid this case represents our last together as colleagues and work-related social companions. For the moment, as long as there is insurance, my friends, there will be bizarre insurance claims. For example, this claimant placed a 2.6-liter rotary engine inside a production Mazda Meata MX-5. As you are aware, this type of engine is more common in high-performance propeller-driven aircraft. If you would please take it and ascertain just how badly this can go wrong. The first phase of testing will be along standard country roads with mild undulations next to the coast. data is adequate but incomplete. Please do not concern yourself with the howling noise. This is quite normal. Endeavor to gather more information, please. Good. Now for the urban testing phase. You will please take into account traffic and various asphalt conditions. Please avoid collisions with urban vehicles.
Excellent. Now we begin the highway testing phase. Please exceed 200 miles an hour along this section for optimum data gathering. Ah, well done. But I feel we would gain further illumination with further acceleration. Do you not think so? Interesting. My calculations suggest a performance of this kind should result in total spontaneous engine disassembly. And yet, here you are! I know you are busy at the festival, I'm sure I will see more of you. But if you should ever leave, I hope you will consider a career in insurance. <laughs> 